Welcome back to Milanze Productions. So today we're going to be talking about another new private server called Epoch Game or Epoch Epoch. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Epoch Classic Plus Server. So uh, there's already like another Classic Plus server that I play. I play quite a lot. Everybody knows it. But we're not here to talk about that server. We're here to talk about this new one. So. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read this reddit post here. They have a couple of pictures I also have two other pictures that I pulled off the uh, discord and We'll talk about it in a second. So It says right here. Oh, by the way, this is posted one day ago. So this is very new uh, Introducing project epoch epoch whatever it is classic plus server many months of tireless work have led to this point and we're happy to finally introduce the wow community to project epoch uh project epoch is a new classic plus experience built on the foundations of a 3.3.5 client with extensive modifications both client so or both client and server side to more closely reproduce the feeling of vanilla world of warcraft or vanilla world that you know and love uh, over the course of our active development we have introduced thousands of new creatures hundreds of new uh, quests Achievements, new items, voice acting, fully custom dungeons, reputations, and much more. And then they have a picture here of uh, new and improved dead mines. So current dungeons, not just, you know, new ones that they are adding into it, but current dungeons they are revamping basically. This is dead mines. Obviously, you see the boat here. Let's um, zoom in a little bit. You can see there's a couple of. Um, it looks like blood sale, but I mean they're they're supposed to be defias, but they're dressed like blood sale. Anyway, you see a little goblin here. Um, looks like there's a person here, but you can't really see what it is. And then right here, it I can't really tell, but it kind of looks like a tauren. Like there's the back main right there, and then I guess the sure. I don't know if that's Mr. Smee or what. Uh, we go over here. Got more pirates, more goblins. Got a couple of cannons. A lot of machinery so it's definitely there's a lot of rework on this area right here uh going down there is yeah, so right here fully custom rework of the dead mines featuring new bosses and new mechanics and then uh right here the zeppelin towers of ogamar await uh adventures seeking new lands so we go here um i have no idea where the hell in ogamar this would be but it certainly has the ogamar aesthetic and then there's new towers right here so probably um considering that's the ocean right there that's gonna be on the eastern side of ogamar because that makes more sense to me so um i'm just trying to think of the layout of ogamar so probably in valley of honor uh there's probably a path that would or an open area that would lead to this area right here that's where i'm guessing okay I'm not, i don't know for sure but considering that looks like the ocean the ocean's on the east side of ogamar makes sense to me right Anyway, so here's all of the uh, bulletin points of what the server has to offer. Uh, and then right here is the website. They also have a uh, Discord channel. So I'll also link that too and I'll show you that as well. Uh, however, here are some of the key features. This is going to be a PvE server. Now hold that thought. We'll get to PvP in a moment. Uh, the level cap will be level 60 because even though they are running off a 3.3.5 client, this is going to be a vanilla plus server. So level cap will be 60. Now he here's where they get me. They say 61 talent points with every few levels giving an additional point. So I have no idea if that means additional talents that require more talent points or if it's going to let us put talents in every talent point. Or, or talent point in every talent. I have no idea. But uh, 61 talent points with uh, every few levels giving an additional point. So maybe they start you off with that and then you get additional. I have no idea. Anyway, uh, classes have been reverted to a TBC state. That means instead of uh, vanilla abilities and talents, we're going to be getting TBC ones. Uh, with tweaks to adjust them to level 60. Uh, so it's basically balancing them out. If they were supposed to be balanced for a higher level or something, uh, it would be balanced a little bit lower to be at level 60. Uh, balancing to ensure gameplay is closer to the classic feel. 
Um, so far, over 250 style Blizzard quest or Blizzard style quests within the level 1 to 30 bracket have been added to Azeroth, giving players a refreshed leveling experience. So just like the other server that I will not name, that if you watch my channel, you know which one I'm talking about. Uh, in older zones, there is going to be new custom quests. You're still going to have the uh, go hunt Ekiaki in the Barrens, right? But then you'll have another guy that says, Hey, I also need you to uh, go kill some Burning Blade. Because there's Burning Blade dudes up there, but you don't really do anything with them. Unless, I think, for Warrior Quest line. I don't remember. But, hey, go kill them, okay? So... That, that's just, you know, an example. In older zones, there's going to be the same old quest that, that we know and love, but there's going to be new custom quests on top of it to give it a new feeling, even though it's the same zone. But on top of that, uh, oh, right here. So extensive world edits in the form of new subzones, points of interest, large-scale work such as the restoration of Silithus to a launch state. I don't know what the restoration of Silithus is exactly means but um new sub zones new points of interest and large scale work so um basically I, I i'm now i haven't seen anything but this is my take on it if you look at the vanilla map okay you know before the cataclysm revamp there are a lot of empty spaces between zones a lot of areas that if you somehow manage to glitch over or if you look at like one of those maps that's like all the mini maps put together so you see all the little areas you'll see there's just a lot of dead area i have known other servers uh to utilize these empty areas now that's probably what they're going to do with these new sub zones is utilize these empty areas uh there's a lot of empty areas between zones. There's also just fully empty zones. Like, if you look at the original map of Vanilla, there's zones you see on the map. You can't click over or mouse over them. If anything, you can mouse over and see the name Hyjal for Mount Hyjal, but you can't access it. But there's a lot of zones, mainly in Eastern Kingdoms, that are zones with an outline border, and you just cannot click on them. You cannot go to them. So I'm hoping they're going to add those as well as fully built zones. Um, Classic Plus itemization restored to 1.12. So basically items over the years have gotten upgrades um, or have been buffed. Because the item items that were introduced at let's say launch or maybe like a next patch or two after that do not have the same stats as... 1.12 and also they have changed from 1.12 into tbc and other expansions so no matter whether it was from launch 1.1 or 1.0 rather to tbc 2.2 or whatever uh all items are going to be restored or fit the feel of 1.12 uh and that impacts more than 15,000 items uh, challenging fully custom dungeons alongside reworked Blizzard instances for added difficulty. So, I'm all for added difficulty. You know, I'm the kind of person that I don't really like to rerun the same dungeon over and over and over and over again. Fast romp, get it done, like this. I like dungeon crawlers. I, I like to run a dungeon really only once or twice, but for that once or twice... I want to actually have a dungeon crawler. I want to feel like I'm progressing new areas. Like, the next time I go, maybe there's an area I missed because it's a fully open area. Think of Black Rock Depths, right? That's the one that everyone goes to, right? Black Rock Depths, but 10 times, right? I, I want to have new areas to explore. Maybe the next time I go, I go to an area that I haven't been to before. All, like, just go full out, right? But they're also going to add it uh, to be challenging, and we saw right here with the dead mines. Also, there's another picture I have up here of another dungeon that they ha that they've you know shown pictures that they have revamped. Uh, we'll get to that in a second though. Professions have new immersive skills and bonuses to add depth to each profession. So again, I have another picture up here that we will get to. Um, talking more about that later. 
a brand new progressive timeline that includes new raid tiers along with blizzard raid along with blizzard raids offering a truly unique uh progression experience so i don't know if that also means they're going to be revamping oh no you know what there is a picture oh right here actually anixia's lair see this buddy right here yeah that is um those enough who are brave enough to enter anixia's lair expect new bosses to await with new loot and mechanics so old raids will have new mechanics and new bosses i don't know if they're gonna have new layouts or anything but they are going to have also new fully custom raids now again there are other servers at least a couple of that i can think of that have fully custom dungeons and raids it's not nothing new but given this is a new server there's obviously going to be a new take on it uh now where did i leave off right here so, even though it is taking place in a 1.3.5 client, they are not going to have any new races, at least at launch. However, instead of having Blood Elves and Draenei, what they're going to do is Undead are going to be able to be Paladins, and Dwarves are going to be able to be Shamans, so that the Horden Alliance can have respective Paladin and Shaman on their side. Now... I don't fully agree with this. I like shamans being horde only and paladins being alli alliance only. That's just old school Warcraft lore, right? You know, alliance developed the paladins and shamans are from the more primitive orcish troll and even tauren nature of it. So I I I'm not fully agreeing on this, but you know, that's just one little nitpick, right? Uh, okay, so here we go pvp war modes remember how i said hold that thought here it is pvp war mode and new outdoor objectives such as tower battles in hillsbrad foothills now um i think i read on their discord that they are planning to add more outdoor pvp um objectives to do i couldn't think of the word objectives uh this is just one example that they have given uh, tower battles in his so it's gonna be like um the towers in eastern plaguelands or hellfire peninsula that's more you know fresh in people's minds with tbc classic but that's basically what they're going to add i had them clarify that in uh their discord when i was asking questions so it's gonna be uh go and hold the area and you get a zone buff for whoever has the area but you're only gonna be able to access this if you're flagged for war mode and only war mode people will be able to you know do it uh, new battlegrounds to add variety to the underground. Now, there are unused battlegrounds that were supposed to be in vanilla. One of them being uh, the... Uh, it was Ajara... What was it? Crater? Ajara Crater? So there are unused vanilla battlegrounds. There are also unused battlegrounds in every expansion, rather. However, uh, do they have the picture down here? Yes. Uh, I'll, you know, I'm going to click it right now. Right here, uh, so this is supposed to be Gilligajim Island. Now, it, from what I've seen of Gilligajim from unused assets from the actual World of Warcraft, as well as other servers who have utilized it as a fully realized zone, uh, the layout is obviously different. So they have completely uh, reworked, especially this land bridge right here. It looks... It basically... This is the exact same layout from what I can see of... Um, I have the storm from TBC. Like, here's Tower 1. Tower 2 would be over here off screen. Tower 3, Tower 4. Here's the middle. Here's bridge. Here's bridge. That's a starting area. And the other starting area is following this road over here. So it's basically Eye of the Storm, but on Gilligajim Island rather than the Nether Storm. Which, I mean, that's fair enough. That's fine, okay? Uh, where are we? Where are we? Cross faction gameplay. Uh, pretty much every server has cross faction now it's not anything new even blizzard has added it into their retail server but i mean other servers have done it first so that's nothing new but it's glad to know that they have it uh, available a uh, season of mastery inspired soul of iron for those with a brave heart uh soul of iron i have no idea what the hell that means i'm guessing that means like an iron man option which again other servers have implemented so that is again nothing new but it's great to see that they're at if that's what it is right it's glad to see that they're adding a challenge mode um I think that's what it is, Soul of Iron, you know, for Iron Man, that, that's just what makes sense to me. If that's something else, please correct me, 
But anyway, uh, thousands of creatures restored to a vanilla state. Now, I had this clarified, and I'll get to that post in a second, but I, I had them clarify what that meant. So, uh, if anyone remembers, if, been, if anyone played the original uh, vanilla game and progressed into the actual TBC and Wrath, a lot of creatures that were originally uh, elites or even hostile were nerfed to non-elites or even to... Um, uh, uh, neutral rather than aggressive, like like the starting areas in the in the level like five area, there would always be a cave or an area that you would have to fight full of aggressive creatures. That would be your first introduction to aggressive creatures at level five. Those uh, in a later expansion were nerfed to be neutral. Everything in the level five area is neutral until you get out into the actual starting area where the level six area where the level six guys are. Um, they're going to reverse all that, make them aggressive again, and creatures such as, uh, certain rares, certain just random elites out in the world were all nerfed to be, uh, non-elite. Uh, outdoor dungeon-style areas such as, uh, uh Genthel Allure, or whatever it's called, in the Hinterlands, that was all nerfed to no longer be elite questing. Uh, they are going to revitalize that and make them back into elites. So that's uh, a good thing, in my opinion. It adds challenge, uh, and it also encourages team play. So a lot of areas you can solo. I've heard of people soloing gentle lore, but, it, you know, they're like rogues or something, right? I've heard of hunters soloing it, but it's beneficial for people to be in a group. In an MMO. Anyway, um, ongoing development that introduces new content at regular intervals. So that's basically they have a roadmap. Now they haven't said what the roadmap is, but they have an internal roadmap for uh, patches to add more and more content as the server progresses. But they're not going to obviously tell us what it is just yet. Um, they're just going to tell us all of this, which will be at launch. And then, um, here, uh, there's their link to the Discord channel. I'll see if I can link it in the description below. If not, uh, this is on the Reddit on... Which Reddit? It, well, uh, r slash WoW servers. It should be fairly new. It, it'll be easy to find. And then you can just click on their Discord link there. Uh, but right here, so here's the other dungeon. Wailing Caverns. So, as you can see, it is, obviously, changed. First of all, they have a bridge going from here's the starting area. The raptor has been there forever. But remember, you would crawl down here or crawl down here, and then you can go that way for um, a couple of bosses that way. Or you can go this way, which led to the maze area. They have now a bridge to lead to the dreamer. Also, if you look down here, now here's the normal little turtle boss. However, he's got the Cataclysm updated graphics, which makes me wonder if certain creatures are going to have updated models at all. Um... They have a Hydra down here, which is new. They've never had a Hydra in this before. Uh, there's a normal little crocodile, but if you look at the water, look how it's a step with a little baby waterfall. Again, a step, baby waterfall. That was never there before. It was just flat little river that crossed. So that little stream there with the little waterfall, that that's an elevated... That's a added elevation that was never there before. And then I already showed you Gilligan Gym. There's Anixia's Lair. And I showed you these. Okay, so the pictures. Here's this one here. So, oh, I thought I had uh, more than that. Anyway, so with the, um, what they said over here, where was it? Uh, professions have new immersive skills and bonuses. Okay, so I picked out these two pictures here that they showed uh, to somebody on the Discord who were in the, um... Uh, questions panel. So right here, this is for tailoring. Uh, you can make this with two bolts of wool and one fine thread, so that's fairly cheap. Um, woolen sorcerer's embroidery. Attach an embroidery to your cloak, increasing damage and healing done by magical spells and effects by five. Only the tailor's cloak can be enchanted, and enchanting a cloak will cause it to become soulbound. <laughs> so yeah, that's um, uh, basically a tailor's equivalent to like the um leather workers uh leather working kit. Is that what they're called? I forgot what they're called. But it basically adds like armor bonuses to um your chest, your legs, 
whatever. So basically, this is uh, Taylorings version of it. And then the other one over here is um. So they added this. It was called something else, but it w they had this in later iterations of uh, mining, where if you had the mining profession, you would get an increased uh, buff to your player. Now they're adding this, uh, which is basically the same thing, but for vanilla. Made of metal, all of your hard work spent mining has made you exceptionally tough, increasing your total health by 1%. And then that's just rank 1, so as you progress in mining, you know, you get the rank 2 to start smelting other stuff, you get the rank 3, it'll probably increase it by, you know, 2%, 3%. So that's a very good thing, I really like that. Anyway, so, um... Okay, so here is my question to them. Hi there, I will be covering the server on my channel. I just had a few questions uh, before I make my video. One is clarification on creatures. Uh, because when when I was reading that they added thousands of new creatures, but then they reverted creatures to a vanilla state, I didn't know exactly what that meant. But they did clarify it um, right here that they're going to be making them elites again, and that's what I already explained to you, so I'm going to go ahead and skip that. I then asked them what the experience rate will be. So here's their clarification. Um, this isn't a clear cut times one, but we'll use that as a starting point. We have restored the amount of experience required to each level to the 112 state. However, with TBC, Blizzard upped the experience rewards to many quests. We have additionally, we have intentionally left those changes in. This balances out to an experience rate somewhere in between Season of Mastery and the default vanilla. Combined with our overall new quest, players shouldn't feel like they have to have the urge to grind and can comfortably uh, progress through a zone. So, um, basically, you're going to have the same level, um, experience requirements to reach the next level. However, quests are going to get a minuscule buff, like a, a like a, like a, more like they're gonna give you more experience is what i'm trying to say they're gonna be more experience but not wrath of the lich king cataclysm levels right you know I, I feel in my opinion wrath of the lich king was a good balance it wasn't too fast wasn't too slow while cataclysm was insane i was getting to level 40 in one day i was like holy crap i remember when cataclysm first came out and i got my my troll druid to level 40 in one day and people were actually whispering me they could not believe it they're like did you race change a like a druid to a troll how did you get to 40 so fast like it was mind-blowing how fast you could level wrath of lich king like i said i think is a good middle like it wasn't too fast it wasn't too slow you could get to level 80 in a couple of weeks you know it wasn't too bad um with this, it's going to be in the middle between uh, TBC and vanilla. So you're going to get a little bit faster than normal vanilla, but not TBC settings. So, um, not, not too bad. I'll say not too bad. Um, my next uh, question was, will there be custom lore? And they say, absolutely. We already have hundreds of new quests, which will be available in our beta. And, um... More and more to go. We focus on the classic style while still allowing ourselves to pinch elements we like from the Warcraft RPG and comics. Very good. Then the uh, last one I... Uh, well, actually, I had two more questions, but the last one of this one was... Any plans to add fully... Uh, like, full custom zones? I saw that they add, they're going to add sub-zones, but are they going to add fully new zones? Um, right here. Uh, we have some on the horizon shortly post-launch, but saving that much for a surprise later. So it's going to be post-launch in a uh, content update patch, not at launch. And then uh, my last question will be, now this is very important. Will there be a file slash launcher for ease of access, or will you have to torrent a file and then download a patch? So basically... Um, uh, some servers offer just a file, you click it, you install it, you're done. Others have a launcher that you would have to install, and then from there it would install the game and update patches and everything from the launcher. Um, some of those are good. A certain server did not do so well and has become infamous for it. And then I have played other servers which um, required me to torrent... 
the whatever file they want me to, and then they would give me the patch to update it to their standards, and I do not like that at all. They've taken feedback, and luckily they are going to fix that, but that's not this server. This server, they're going to have a custom updater that this person has developed to themselves, have been testing for the past few months, and is an intent to be open source to avoid any fears that people may have of using a launcher. So, he's obviously saying this last part because of a certain infamous server. <laughs> but, um, anyway, yeah, so, they, uh, where was it? Right here. Uh, we are at the point where we will need to build a strong community, uh, ready to get into the world and break things. Uh, within the next couple of months, we intend on having our first open beta with a level range of 1 to 30 with the hope that you will... Uh, what you find will be a good sample of what we will be producing up to level 60 and beyond. So, from what I'm getting is, they already have pretty much their 1 to 60 stuff, at least, outlined. With 1 to 30 being the most fleshed out, out of the whole experience. Their open beta is going to be specifically for you to break the server, find issues with it, as such a, a beta is supposed to be. You know, it's not supposed to be a demo. It's supposed to be to purposely find issues, report them so they can fix it so the launch is smooth. So, that's why they say they want you to actually go and break things so they can know what to fix. And, you know, they're being, you know, open about that, which they have to be. They have to nail it over the head. This is a beta. This is not a demo. And they say it's going to be 1 to 30, which is fine. You know, pinpoint a certain area, not spread everything out. Probably, my opinion, they should start with the 1 to 30, get as much out of it as they can. And then if they have a second open beta, be uh, from 31 to 60 to pinpoint stuff in that level range. Also, so people don't have to start from 1 to 60 again because, you know, they wipe between betas most of the time. So, I, I feel that would be the good way to approach it. Or... Um, have it so we can have an already level 30 or level 60 character so we could test features, test things as needed, but we won't get burnt out by the leveling process at the same time because that also happens with betas. Um, yeah, join their Discord and when they're ready to have their open beta, they will. Now, on their Discord server, where is it? I asked them right here. I'm gonna pull this off. Boop. Oh, if yeah, there we go. So I asked them right here. Um now I didn't see that they said within a couple of months. So I asked them, is there an ETA for the open beta? Now this is probably not set in stone, but uh this person here, which is one of the developers, say between six to eight weeks, which is about uh, you know, a month and a half to two months now again probably not set in stone it might get pushed back but that's their current eta so that's uh pretty good now you could join again here they're from what i'm seeing they're answering everybody's question and unlike a certain infamous uh server they're not screaming at anybody for asking a simple question so so far from what i've seen the devs seem pretty nice they're giving as much information as they can. Um, they also, uh, not the political. Anything. Yeah, this is the question I was looking for. Uh, how will it be funded? Not something to be concerned about. Money is not an issue, and it has been discussed. We will, of course, have a shop. But by the way, I saw another post real quick that said that they are against pay to win, so that's something. Uh, not until after launch, which is again good because unlike certain servers, uh, they will not be putting the shop putting any payment options before launch so that's a good thing uh oh here it is and will not feature any pay to win aspects there you go uh it will also not feature crazy high detail downported retail assets or anything like that so you're not going to be able to have um the infinite dragon or whatever from retail on this server um Exact details still being worked out, but isn't something we are discussing until it gets closer to being necessary. This is a passion project. Money would only help us out, uh, uh, help put more effort and money into the project. So I feel like they've already fully funded it to launch, and any extra money coming in would just, you know, fuel it to keep going at that point. That's what I'm getting out of it. Now, he said, 
I, I real quick want to go back to where he said um, no high detail downported retail assets. Now, because it is a 3.3.5 client, um, it is possible we might get Burning Crusade and Wrath mounts and armor equipment, stuff like that. I do not expect anything from Cataclysm and Beyond, but possible to get unless they come out and say outright no tbc and wrath stuff i think it's possible to get that kind of stuff i mean because if you look at wrath stuff i mean it's not really super high detailed when you look at like vanilla stuff right it might have a few extra pixels but it's not crisp and clean like newer armors tend to be nowadays right um Real quick, this is added on. So this is something that I actually didn't... For some reason, I didn't even bother to look. But this is their website, and it actually has a lot more on there than their uh, Reddit page or their Discord server. So, um... Obviously, we have more screenshots here. We had a, a video that we saw of... Let's see, we've got raids, dungeons... There's more itemization pictures, uh, tools... Okay, so that's what they're using. But, uh, let's start from the top real quick. Okay, uh, okay, that's that's basically their uh, intro. Uh, along your journal to level 60, you will find hundreds of new quests throughout every zone, encouraging an old sense of adventure. You will find continent and otherwise empty area store. You know, okay, this is already stuff that we pretty much talked about, even though it's written differently. But let's just look at the, uh, the video and the uh, screenshots instead. So this right here, um, Alliance Subzone for... I can't read what that says. Hang on, let's... Upper Marshes. Oh, you know what? I know where this is. This has got to be in Wetlands. So, um, another server uses this area as well for a, a sub-zone. So, uh, that's, this is the exact same area. This, this is probably just their take on it. This is loud. Holy crap. Okay, I lowered it a little bit. That's, uh, really loud. Is this a different area? Hang on a second. Let me go back to, to the front real quick. Okay, yeah, so this is that one area that I've seen in the other server. Gundal- Gulder. This looks completely different. Okay, so this, this is, um... <clears throat> this is obviously gotta be in wetlands, but I don't know... Where in wetlands? Highlands Nook. Okay, this is again. This is an area that's been I've I've seen before utilized. I recognize the area at least. Um. Yeah, same here. Zulu Mar. So they're re so they named it after Zulu. The chieftain of the uh, dra Dragon Maw. Well, that makes sense, because these are Dragon Maw orcs in wetlands. So they renamed it after Zulu. Or Zulu Head, or whatever his name is, right? Zulu Head? I don't know. What is this? Okay, so female... What the fuck is that? I can't tell. Is that... Oh, it's a dragon! See, look, there's the head, here's the wings, and there's his, uh, paws, and he's laying down. So, being that these are Dragon Mars, they're pro- they're- Dragon- Dragon Mars? Dra dragon Moths? They're probably, uh, subduing the dragon or something. Oh, is that their, uh... <laughs> That's what I figured. Okay, so that hourglass kind of gave it away. So, um... If you remember, there's a lot of um, enemies of the Infinite Dragonflight that have Epoch in their name. Uh, Epoch Hunter and stuff like that. So, um, the Hourglass, their their custom lore that they plan on having, it has to do something with the, the Bronze Dragonflight. Okay, um, let's look at this right here. Um, Ashenvale. Um... I don't know, was there Moonkin in there before? But anyway, that's that's obviously uh, something new. Where the heck? I don't, oh, okay. 
I don't know. It just kind of um. So here's Silithus. Um, I'm. This hill looks new because here's the big spire with all the bugs swarming around it. I don't know. Is it this hill looks new? But I I, I don't really know. I'm not. I really don't quest in Silithus that often, so I'm not as familiar with it. I always try to skip it if I can. Um, this looks standard. Got Anduin, Lady Pastor, um, Bolvar, so that looks fairly standard. Uh, here's talent points for Warrior. Warrior! I'm not, again, too familiar with Warrior, but if this means anything to you, uh, you can mention it in the comments if you want to. Um, I can definitely tell it's Warrior, but as, as far as the symbols of what talents they're all supposed to mean uh, that means nothing to me because i i've played warrior but not in really classic wow i played it in like Ra uh, no not wrath like miss a pandaria and draenor uh what do we got here uh okay so there's the uh dwarf shaman uh undead paladin inside scarlet monastery yes that makes sense <laughs> not really but okay uh what do we got there um what the fuck is that supposed to mean uh do you have oh it's the uh okay Locate a chronicler in a faction to into the epoch hardcore mode based on okay yeah so I was correct this is a hardcore mode so you have to find this person and they'll unlock it for you okay <clears throat> for those who hunger glory on the battlefield we offer war mode system okay so that's probably who you talk to to enter war mode system and looking at this that means um stormwind docks so stormwind docks wasn't really added into um. Wow, until Wrath of the Lich King, I believe. Uh, but I have seen some servers add it into uh, vanilla servers. So it's not really a big surprise to see Stormwind Docks there. Okay, so dungeons. Now we've seen this picture already. Here's another picture. Okay, so that's Dead Mines. But that's another picture you can definitely tell it looks a lot new. Um, The textures do look a little bit like not super high detailed, but more detailed than a vanilla tile would have. Um, we've already seen that. Uh, Nerlux is blue. Wait, is that Nerlux? So that means when you go... Oh, crap! So when you go into the room where Nerlux is in uh, Wailing Caverns, you have this, like, Ragnaros-esque... Uh, spiral to get to him. But then look at this. There's like all these like... I don't know if those are tunnels or pockets. But probably something comes out of them when you do his uh, fight. Uh, Doan. So... New mechanics and hidden bosses challenge those who... Okay, so new bosses. New mechanics inside of previous... I mean, we know that, but maybe... Maybe like Scarlet Monastery, the layout is the same, but there's probably new bosses in the old layout. I would hope Armory has new... Go away. I would hope Armory has new bosses, because doing the entirety of Armory for one boss is kind of ridiculous. Uh, okay, we saw this picture already. So that's a new boss inside of um, Anixia's Lair right there. The other one had the other guy. Uh, we got Ragnaros here. Uh, looks pretty standard. As per... New mechanics to encounters. Okay, so they're they're adding new mechanics to um, Ragnaros, basically. <clears throat> Alright, we saw this picture already of Gilligan Jim. Uh, that looks like a fairly standard PvP. That looks... Uh, okay, so that, that's one of the towers they're going to be able to control in Hillsbrad. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we already know about that. Um, okay, so, yeah, look at this. So, here's an example of how items have changed. So, here's Classic WoW. Here's the same item in Wrath. Uh, oh, Death Speaker Robes! I know exactly what these are. These drop from, um, Death Speaker Jargebla in, uh, Ra Razor Friend Crawl. I know exactly what these are. Uh, but yeah, they, they're blue, because they're like a, they become a blue in Wrath. And it looks like they go back to a green... But they're a little, like, a little tiny better than Classic, because the only difference I see is that it's got better stamina. But, um... So it's basically, um, a little bit better in terms of stats, 
but it does not give you the equipped bonus. So that's basically that. And then what do we got here? Um, Ember Fury Talisman. Uh, that sounds familiar. I just can't remember where that one's from. Uh, oh wow. So it got rid of the fire resistance there, but it gave you better hit rating, chance to get a critical strike, critical strike rating. So yeah, they definitely changed that a lot by Wrath. And then here, let's see where it compares. So it gives you a ton more stamina, uh, the same amount of spirit in terms of classic. It gives you back your fire resistance, which is good. I actually like more RPG style stuff like that. Um, and it returns the critical strike chance. Okay. So yeah, that's it. Uh, okay, so this is added on to the video. Let's continue our normal broadcasting. Oh, check out this question here from Lambie. Hey, I know Lambie from another server. Uh, question. In terms of inflation in the game, will this be managed? Will gold levels be closer to classic or, uh, Wrath of Liching? Hard to answer for sure, uh, bleh. Hard to answer for sure, but things like epic mounts will cost a thousand dollar, or gold, rather. Uh, with GDKPs most likely, don't take as gospel, being banned. That will reflu uh, reduce inflation too. Now, this is something I've said before. On paper, the basic idea of GDKP, I am not against. However, the issue comes into people buying gold, gold farmers, and bots. You know, like Chinese gold farmers, that's all they, that's all they do is farm raw gold to put it out into the economy. Uh, gold sellers, hackers to take gold and sell it to other players. That's the kind of issue that causes the inflation in the first place and then people buying the gold to enter into a gdkp raid to pay for items you know that's basically paying to win that's where the issue comes into play with gdkp and that's where it came into classic wow with people buying gold because Biz blizzard wasn't doing anything with the gold sellers gold farmers right now if somebody just casually then you know they, they just want to farm gold that you know that is a way of playing it but there's a line, or there's a fine line between somebody, you know, they just want to grind for a couple of hours to sell things to a vendor and get some money for themselves to buy an epic mount. You know, that's that's completely fine. It comes down to people botting, having, you know, you've seen the videos of, like, the people in and out, in and out, just ten of them there, in and out, in and out of dungeons on bots or multi-boxing or whatever going around either killing everything and looting everything or pickpocketing you know black rock depths that's where it's the cutoff point right now again in essence flat on paper i don't think there's anything wrong in general with a gdkp raid it's just when it comes to buying the gold that's where it comes an issue and yeah and there's a bunch oh hey he's in he's in my discord um, all of, all of your questions can be answered here. Uh, they also have ideas and suggestions, so you could definitely, um, ask if they can or will add anything. And, like, this person asked about the, que the, uh, profession questions, and that's where I got my pictures from, is they posted pictures of the, that were willing to show you progress of the, uh, professions. Yeah, anything you want, you can join the Discord server. I, if I can, I'll try to post it in the description below. If not, like I said, you can go to the uh, Reddit page and get the link there. But anyway, I am done. I will be definitely covering more of this server. I also cover other servers if you want to as well. You can keep up with that. I'm going to be playing in the future some retail because right now i'm not playing it for certain reasons but i will play wrath of lich king when it comes out i will play maybe i'll play dragon flight when it comes out we'll see how it comes but yeah if you want to check out any of that i'm also going to be doing survival games and as if you look at my most previous video i am doing lore videos too if you're interested in any of that kind of stuff please subscribe comment like the video see ya